Hey fellow Guardians, what's going on? I'm Blake the Great. At this year's E3, Nintendo revealed Metroid Prime Federation Force, and it was met with dislikes and petitions. Citing past perceived controversy with Wind Waker and fan outcry, Reggie believes this to be a similar case and asks fans to continue trusting him. Well Reggie, I have a problem with that. Because after researching everything I could find regarding Metroid and its fans, I have some serious doubts that we should trust you at all, and I'm going to prove it without bashing Metroid Prime Federation Force. This is Guardian of the Game Shop. Yeah, we, we don't have a graphic department. Or an audio department, for that matter. Okay, so let's begin. Leading up to E3 2015, Nintendo themselves stated that the games that were being shown at E3 would be coming out soon or in the near future. Aside from Nintendo saying they weren't going to show games that weren't out in the near future, we also have Tanabe saying that if we started for Wii U now, it would likely take three years or so, so it would likely now be a Nintendo NX console. He was referring to a Wii U game for Metroid Prime and whether or not we would see one on the Wii U. Given that he is talking about a hypothetical scenario requiring three years, and rumors of NX releasing in 2016 or 2017, it now seems pretty reasonable to suggest that Metroid Prime Federation Force is the only Metroid title coming to a Nintendo console in the near future. And if you are desperately clinging to the dream that Nintendo is hiding a Metroid game in their pocket and will reveal a Metroid game in 2016, then please allow me to turn your attention to a later quote in the same previous interview. Truth be told, making HD games takes a lot of time and resources, and then he went on to say, I haven't been able to collect a team or resources to do it. Okay, full stop. The last sentence tells us plenty. It tells us Tanabe had difficulty securing funding even a team to make Metroid for the Wii U. If Nintendo had so much faith in Metroid the brand, why do they have a guy in charge of 3D Metroid asking around for help? I also think it's reasonable to suspect that Tanabe hasn't made much progress with an early launch NX Metroid game either, especially if he's struggling to attain resources and a team for the entire Wii U generation. In the 29 years of Metroid's existence, it might also shock you to know that the last 2D Metroid game was 11 years ago with the release of Metroid Zero Mission. Or, to put it another way, Metroid fans have been waiting for another 2D entry for the same amount of time that Pikmin fans waited for Pikmin 3. Metroidvania, the genre that gives Metroid and Castlevania full credit for an entire style of gameplay, was established by these two enduring franchises, and while Konami is no publisher of the year this year, Silent Hills anyone, the last third of the mother franchise to this genre has seen zero attempts to innovate, impress, surprise, or delight fans. Well, shortly after Zero Mission's release, rumors began floating about a new 2D Metroid game for the DS. Let me introduce you to Metroid Dread, the first rumored 2D Metroid game that was set to take place after Metroid Fusion. From 2005 to 2007, fans cling to every rumor and news piece they could find. Yet despite years of demands or interest, Nintendo never formally debuted Metroid Dread. But in this 2010 interview, when asked about Metroid Dread, Sakamoto acknowledged the existence of the game and his hopes to restart the project. I cannot deny the existence of such a project in the past, but cannot say if it will be what I move on to next or not. I'm sorry, but we would like to keep the game a mystery. After all, there has been a lot of speculation surrounding Dread, and my hope, if at all possible, is to reset the situation at once and start from scratch. That was in 2010, and here are Sakamoto's comments in 2009 regarding Dread. The day may come when Dread hits the stores, but this one is something that's completely different. This is Other M. So in the 11 years fans have waited for a 2D installment to innovate the genre that they started, Nintendo knowingly allowed Metroid Dread to exist in the minds of gamers, but never went out of their way to confirm it, and still telling us with a wink, it's happening. You know, Nintendo, it doesn't seem very responsible of you to keep fans on a continual leash of promises and still come up empty. But Blake, what about Other M? Okay, so midway through the 11 years, we did get a real 2D-ish Metroid-style game from Sakamoto. What my team and I are shooting for is the ultimate Metroid experience. Up until now, we've created the Samus who, yes, is indeed a strong, charming, and very cool heroine. But we're hoping to create is a Samus now that not just fans of Metroid will appreciate, but everyone who's experiencing the game. So I'm hoping that everyone looks forward to exploring the Metroid world and experiencing Samus as a character. Now here's the thing. Other M's story was often seen as the most glaring issue. Sakamoto even expressed his concern that the fans didn't have a consistent idea of Samus and how he wanted to depict her. Each different player may have their own understanding of the characteristics and nature of Samus Aran. 
It's not good for the entire Metroid franchise, for its past or its future, if each player has a different understanding about what kind of person Samus Aran is. The problem is, in the nine year wait between Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion, fans had a lot of time not being told who Samus was, and with little to no storytelling in the games, coupled with magazine articles and ads that only refer Samus as a female badass bounty hunter, I'm not surprised that fans submitted their own ideas. I think Other M portrayal of Samus also didn't work, because in my research of Metroid development, it is very clear that Tanabe is solely in charge of the 3D games, and Sakamoto just signs off on his ideas. If Sakamoto isn't paying enough attention to how Samus is developing in Prime, then how will Sakamoto's portrayal of Samus be accurate to Samus? At the end of the day, I think the real reason Other M failed was because I feel fans wanted to know how the female badass bounty hunter acts on the job, as opposed to Sakamoto taking a badass bounty hunter and showing how she is also a woman. Alright, so I'm doing all this work to convince you that Other M was bad. Why? Because they said they wanted to make the ultimate Metroid experience and didn't do that. But instead of taking the criticism and learning from it, Sakamoto and Nintendo seem to be in complete denial about why the game was poorly received, despite the community making it pretty clear. Three months after the release of Other M, Reggie fils had this to say. I'm not going to sit here and criticize the style of the game, but have I read the same feedback that said broadly that the portrayal of Samus felt different than how the player in the past had internalized the character? I've heard and read the same feedback. Do I think it's warranted or not? I'm not quite sure yet. I don't yet believe that it is the driving factor to the performance of the game. And then in 2013, presumably after spending three years of analyzing feedback, Sakamoto shares his views of Other M's lack of success, and they seem to reveal a bitter developer instead of the dream-believing guy we had come to expect. It is quite obvious why Other M did not succeed when compared to other Nintendo games. It features a female main character. And then follows it with, The game as a whole was received fairly poorly compared to other hit Nintendo titles. I personally wrote the story for the game, so I know it can't be that. I mean, I created a strong female character that people just could not accept. I apologize if gamers feel like they were emasculated playing the game, but that shouldn't affect your judgment of everything else. Sakamoto is saying he created a strong female character and that the fans should not have judged the game just because they may have felt emasculated. For context, here's how one reviewer felt. This is the first game in the franchise that really attempted to humanize Samus and surround her with a supporting cast, but for the most part it does so flatly and without much gravity. Samus' voiceover is painfully dull at times, and the game introduces some frailty in her character that struck me as out of place for someone who's exterminated entire planets worth of awful monsters. Finally, in an interview with CVG in 2014, when asked if he would be returning after Tamadachi Life's release, he stated, I do not intend to do so. There might be various tasks I might be involved in with past series. However, even if so, I would always like to introduce new entertainment and new fun to those series. Yet instead of confirming Sakamoto was done with Metroid, or that Nintendo was currently exploring a new 2D Metroid lead developer, we didn't get that. In fact, a year before Federation Force reveal, or two months after the creator of Metroid says, I'm done with Metroid, we have Shinya Takahashi, a general manager of Nintendo Software Planning and Development Division, speaking with Kotaku stating that Nintendo was having discussions internally about what we can do next, and continued later with, we feel that we do need to take care of both of these styles of play, and the hope is that at some point in the near future we'll be able to share something about them. After years of teasing a 2D title with zero results, after years of feedback from the failing of Other M, and a prior year recommitment statement that fans could expect a real 2D Metroid, we now reach E3 2015. The same E3 that will only focus on the near future. The same near future that Shinya Takahashi must have been mentioning in 2014, right? Now I promise not to bash Federation Force, and I'm not going to, but fans were expecting a Metroid game after the years following Other M, and I just have to question Nintendo's decision if this is the feedback they gathered. When I look at Federation Force, I see two things. First, I see a cartoony game, which isn't good or bad. I'm not making a statement that Metroid can't be cartoony, but Nintendo has said that look would not work for the series in the past. In a translated interview from Japanese Nintendo Online Magazine, Ryuichi Nakata, a map design lead for Metroid Zero Mission, had been told by Nintendo that a Metroid game that wasn't realistic would never work, adding that Metroid was a title that sells extremely well overseas, so North Americans' opinions were essential. And Sakamoto even mentioned at GDC 2010 that when it came to making Metroid games, he took a serious touch instead of a game like Wario, which required a comical touch. 
Nintendo has spent years telling fans what a real Metroid game is, and yet now are saying everything they can to downplay all the Metroid hate. Well, it can't just be looks, so what else could it be? The second thing that comes to mind is that Metroid Prime Federation Force doesn't feel like a real Metroid game to me because, once again, Nintendo developers that I have long respected describe Metroid as this. Mark Pacino, lead designer at Retro Studios. I think the essence of Metroid series can be encapsulated into three basic characteristics, atmosphere, exploration, and Samus. The atmosphere of Metroid is that of an extremely eerie, ominous sort of science fiction. We were certain that in 3D, we could bring that to life very well. The fact is, from the first game, Metroid happened to be rather darkish, or should I say it's always been quite tense and serious, if that's something that can differentiate Metroid from other Nintendo titles. We would like to cherish that. Whatever new technologies we're able to use, we'd like to keep that atmosphere in the Metroid franchise. This is Tanabe from a translated Awada ass from Metroid Prime 3. What we have inherited from the previous games is the system of investigating different rooms one by one, finding and opening secret passages as you go, and as you find new items, you can explore the map further. We have consciously strived to keep this Metroid tradition in the 3D games as well. In Metroid Other M, what hasn't been lost is a sense of isolation and exploration that has always been the hallmarks of the franchise. So fans seem not only upset that you aren't giving them the Metroid game they want, but now you're trying to play off our frustration as business as usual despite these reactions from random fans. Okay, 3DS. Oh, oh. Ow. This does not look like Metroid. No, Metroid Prime Federation for, what? That's that stupid. is not. What is that this? That is not Metroid's art style. That's what I was confused. This was. This is just like the. What list. is this Lego Metroid? They look like Legos. They're, They're like the Lego people. Last ball. Boss you can't. Can't. Question mark. Really? Really? No. Oh, really? Oh, there's Blast Ball. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that. That didn't do it for me, you guys, at all. <laughs> now, we did get a new Metroid game, but yeah. is this the Metroid game people were hoping no. for? This is your chance to shine and show us something that people weren't expecting. I don't know, maybe a new Metroid? Like, not a 3DS Metroid where there's a mini game that was really underwhelming that involves mech soccer, right? A real life Metroid game for the Wii U or something. Federation Force may be a good game on its own, but from all the years of feedback, and the years of dangling a 2D game in our face. It's hard to be excited for a game that seems to have lost the hallmarks of the franchise. And your words about challenging yourself and spinning Federation Force comes off as simply that, spin. And then finally, we also have the recent revelation that before Next Level Games was set to work on Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, the studio had been prototyping a new Metroid game that actually had Samus. However, instead of going back to work on the possible Metroid reboot, after finishing Luigi's Dark Mansion for the 3DS, they were tasked to prepare Metroid Prime Federation Force for a 2016 release. Did I mention that 2016 will be the 30th anniversary for the Metroid franchise? So on the 30th anniversary of the Metroid franchise, instead of getting a reboot from Next Level Games, we are getting a game that seems to have lost the hallmarks of the franchise, and we aren't getting any 2D title that Nintendo has on and off teased for 11 years. That's why we're upset, Nintendo. Oh, and by the way, Nintendo, if you have your full support behind Metroid, then why didn't Tanabe get help to put Federation Force on the Wii U? Why didn't we get that 2D Metroid game you kept promising? Why did you give a whole year to celebrate Mario's brother, but didn't prepare a game for our 30th anniversary after completely forgetting our 25th anniversary? Hell, I walk into a GameStop advertising the hot new games of E3, and of course Federation Force wasn't even on your two posters. Hell, Pokemon wasn't even mentioned at all, and you have one spot for that, and two spots for Skylanders. Oh, but real quick, just to be fair to Federation Force and Nintendo, I think it's important to point out that Tanabe's statements are consistent, and that I didn't feel that Federation Force was a game that he was forced to make. It sounds like he earnestly wanted to go this direction. Just maybe on the Wii U instead. Look, I may not have the answers on how to fix the problem, but I think after watching this video, it's very clear that Metroid fans deserve a lot more than a spin-off on the 30th anniversary. I don't know if the other neglected franchises have had a similar experience of being misled, but Reggie, maybe you should take your own advice when it comes to Mario 30th anniversary and apply it here. To close, as anyone transforms, be it a person or a company, 
It's good to reflect on where you've been to help guide where you go next. Just a thought, Nintendo. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm posting this video today on the 29th anniversary of Metroid. I hope viewers will consider coming back one day to subscribe once I get a better idea of how to make these videos better and more frequent. Special thanks to Metroid Database for being an invaluable resource in all of my Metroid research. Please, if you like this video, would you mind sharing it today, if only to remind Nintendo that Metroid still exists. Plus, I'd love to see Nintendo try to spin this video. Hope you enjoyed my video. I'm Blake the Great Guardian of the Game Shop, reminding you, as always, Keep on gaming!